Amen. We've been doing a teaching on, 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 on real or organic and real authentic uh, discipleship and the cost of discipleship. And that's a blessing. And, and I'm going to continue on in Luke chapter nine on Sunday um, and talk about the transfiguration. But tonight I'm, I'm going to jump off a little bit and just talk about the good news. Remember, I gave us three words. Anybody know them three words we, we go focus on? Three words. First one, I give it to you, preparation. What's the second one? Expectation and then manifestation, right? Praise God. So preparation is where we're preparing. You know, we're preparing. I mean, we can't go to God any, any, in any kind of way. We have to go to him. Let's, matter of fact, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. So follow the, the lead of the Lord. Um, Hebrews chapter 11 and 6. Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We got to believe. Somebody said, I have to believe that he is. That he is. I have to believe that he is. He is what? Everything that God encompasses. When he says, I am that I am, God had to define himself without confining himself. Ain't that something he had to, he had to tell who he was without boxing himself. He had to be the infinite God. Amen. He couldn't be a finite person because we can't fit him into this world. Um, and so he had to define himself. He said, tell him that I am that I am sent me. But when we come to God, we must acknowledge that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So tonight, as we're preparing to come to God, you know, we talk about the gospel a lot. The gospel. What is the gospel? Can somebody tell me what the gospel is? It's the good news. What is the good news? It's the word of God is the good news. Bible Paul says, let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and also to the Greek. So he said, he's not ashamed of power. Who would be ashamed of power? Nobody should be ashamed of power. We all want power. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for everyone, to, of, the power for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and also to the Gentiles. I'm gonna break this down a little bit for us on tonight. Um, the word gospel is from an Anglo-Saxon word, God's spell. It means God's message or a good story. But when we think about it in the Greek, we think of it as only meaning uh, good tidings, only good tidings to themselves. We talk about good tidings, but Greek language actually signifies a present given to one. Watch this, a present given to one brought who brought good tidings or a sacrifice offered in thanksgiving for such good tidings having come. So not only do the gospel talks about not only the message of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, but also it's our response. It's our response. Do you know everything that God is doing, he's already done? That sounds kind of crazy, don't it? Now guess what, you, you healed already. Amen. I thought about it yesterday. Uh, one of my mentees down at University of Indianapolis sent me a song and I was just playing it earlier and I, I was in the shower and it, it broke me down in tears. It was talking about Mary, do you know who's in you? Mary, do you know the, the savior of the world? Mary, do you know? And I began to, to, to look at that personally. Ronnie, do you know? Ronnie, do, do you know? Since Kathy, do you know who you have on the inside of you? The Bible said we have a treasure in earthen vessels, praise God. The, 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 the Bible says you have a deposit of God in you. So since we have it already, we should start saying thank you, God, for what you already done, amen? We should be offering up thanksgiving, a sacrificial praise for him who called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. So there's two parts of the gospel. There's a grace part, but there's a gratitude part too. Somebody say grace. Grace. The Bible says, by grace you're saved through faith. It's not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not by works of righteousness. Any man should boast. So it definitely means that we need to, to thank God or that 
our salvation came through grace without any you any help from from uh human at all but our response and thanksgiving for such good tidings having come so that's actually obeying the plan of salvation when i was reading today we talked about paul how paul called it his gospel let's go to romans chapter 2 verse 16 paul called it his gospel somebody said it's my gospel too amen we got to personalize the gospel if you say i'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power. I, that's personal, not ashamed, what, of gospel, of the power, of the death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, we learned Sunday, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. It's time right now to pull all the stops out right now. It's time to declare who side you're on right now. Draw a line in the sand and say, I don't care what anybody said, I know what side I'm on. But we're talking about the gospel, and the gospel message signifies not only the grace of God for bringing good tidings, but it also talks about the gratitude. It's our response to God sending good tidings to us. So in obedience, praise God, we should be always giving thanks to God for what he has already done. And we're going to learn a little bit later on in the lesson today, what we keep doing is we keep looking at what God done from the time you said I believe until where you at right now, but you got to go all the way back to the time that you also was in your mother's belly because God goes all the way back. See, we're not going back far enough and see what Satan is using. He's using our past on us. And we said, any man that be in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become. Okay. I just got saved last Sunday. No, God said, I called you when you were you and your when you was in your mother's womb. You got to go all the way back to then. And once you start believing that God had already chosen you before the foundation of this earth, once you begin to believe the gospel in its entirety, you'll begin to be more grateful for what God has done. Most Christians are some of the most complaining people in the world, as if it hasn't already been done. Somebody said, I'm already healed. I am already delivered. He sent forth his word and he delivered them. I'm already healed. What does that look like, though? Does that look like you're going to be healed all the time and, and, and the disease going to fall off? And you? No, we're going to talk about being overcomers today. God never wanted us to cope. He never wanted us to cope. And that's what the world suggests. Just learn to cope. No, God wants you to overcome. We're overcomers. So we're talking about the gospel tonight. And, and we're talking about how Paul called it his gospel. In Romans chapter 2, verse 16, it says, on the day when God judged that people have kept secret according to my gospel through Jesus Christ. It was Paul's gospel. He personalized it. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1. How did, how did Paul personalize the gospel? You got to personalize it too. Amen. Amen. Paul says in verse 11 in Galatians chapter 1, for I want you to know this, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin. You did not get it from man. You didn't get it from man. You may have heard the message from man, but the revelata revelatory knowledge of what he said came from God. The fact that you can believe that somebody died on a cross and was buried three days and rose again, when you see people die all the time and we never see them come back, for you to even think that and believe it and to go and share that and spread it with any type of enthusiasm, it took the revelatory knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ to download that to you. We blessed among all people in the world. We don't even know it sometimes. Just the fact that we have the revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's coming back again for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. But Paul called it my gospel because God revealed it to him in the full doctrinal content of the gospel. So it talks about not only our relationship on the basis of his grace, but also on our responsibility um, on the basis of gratitude. We gotta learn to be happy regardless. Happy is the word blessed, and blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of the sorrowful. So blessed and happy can be used interchangeably. But if we're not walking out the purposes of God in thanksgiving, how can we be happy? Amen. So it's his actions, which is, which is his grace. But our response is gratitude. Somebody say that's the real gospel. 
Amen. If we just been preaching, because I told you we've been going back. I'm going back in my notes. I'm going back in old sermons. And this is a teaching that I did before. Amen. But I taught it before upstairs. Praise God about the gospel, about the good news. And the good news is only not the grace of God being applied on our account. But the grace of God is also our gratitude part in obedience to what God has already done to us. Look, it's time for us to receive the blessings of God to make us rich and add no sorrow. It's time for us to begin to walk in our divine purpose which God has ordained for us before the foundation of this earth. It's time for us to walk in victory in this world that's trying to bring us down. Sin is always pulling downward, but God says sin should not have no more dominion over your life. All this is in our gospel package. All this stuff is what God has delivered to you when he downloaded a deposit of himself into your spirit, man. That's why I always talk about the soul, your will, your mind, and your emotion. God is always trying to condition your will, your mind, and your emotion. They're like you condition your hair, ladies. And just like we can, you can, I try to put some condition in my head yesterday. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, they probably say you're supposed to keep it in there for five minutes or something. I don't know. I had it. I forgot I had it in there. Stuff was rolling all down my, my head yesterday. Amen. So I guess you got to read the bottle, right? But man, say, 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 God wants to, he wants to condition your will to, is, to the word of God is not an option no more. God said it, that's it, settles it. Your emotions. He wants you to get excited. When things are going good, he wants you to get excited when things are going bad. Amen. And, and your mind, he wants you to have the mind of Christ. So when God has control, total lordship over your will, your emotions, and your mind, then the spirit can break forth through your soul. And you can see it manifest in your flesh. Two-thirds, law of majority. Law of majority, two-thirds. You got your flesh, you got your soul, and you got your spirit. If your spirit is already created in righteousness and holiness, it's cool. It's your soul. The Bible says abstain from lustly flesh because it wars against your soul. So anything you desire more than you desire God is warring against your soul. So now we're stuck and we, we, we saved and stuck because we keep on arguing with our flesh over what God in your spirit is already settled. God, ain't that something? I'm settled. It's already settled. God's word is yay and amen. Everything God is ever do, gonna do, he's already done it. But we gotta start praying prayers of thanksgiving as if God, I've already believed you for what you've done in my life. And I'm thanking you, amen? So if we just preaching that message, just uh, uh, believe only. I tell we believe we preach believe only. I mean, just just believe. Jesus said, believe only. All things are possible to him that believe. But if we preach and uh, repent, be baptized, and receive the Holy Ghost, it it, it, it don't stop. It, it doesn't stop right there. Amen. Salvation must continue with the working of God's grace. In sanctification, somebody says a sanctification process. It's a sanctification. I'm being sanctified. I'm sanctified. I'm being sanctified. We we see him. We're gonna be just like him. I am in a process right now. You are in a process of being sanctified, and that means you are being converted into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are. Amen. The gospel is not the gospel if we add to it or we take away from it. Paul says that in Galatians chapter one, verse eight, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be what? Accursed. What does that mean? It means doomed. That's what it means. It means devoted to destruction. That's what that means. Accursed means devoted to destruction. That means you're headed to destruction. Any man preach any other gospel unto you let him be excommunicated from the fellowship amen there's one lord there's one faith there's one baptism see what god is doing he's taking off all of that stuff that we didn't picked up on the journey we didn't picked up a whole bunch of stuff on the journey from a whole bunch of different people that looked it and sound like they were ministers of the gospel 
amen, or not even ministers of the gospel, just people who seem to be, like back in, when I was studying to become a personal trainer, I found out how the personal training profession really started. How did it start? The buffed, the buffest dude, Jim, with the six, and the muscles in the shoulder, he was the one that everybody ran to, not understanding he had good genetics. He had a great diet. He drank a lot of water. But they ran to him and said, you the personal trainer. And they embraced him as the personal trainer. Well, when I think about that, and God just brought that back to my attention, a lot of times, that's what has happened in church. Person that we follow, the person we look, he sound good, and we've matched up a few things. But guess what? The revelatory knowledge that you need for God in his sanctification process to bring you into the image of Christ, it's going to come from God and God himself. The word helps us. The word gives us structure. The word uh, um, spoke in an anointed way. It hits you and it causes you change and it causes you to do something. But ultimately, when the Bible says study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed that you can rightly divide the word of truth, that means you're spending some time in your word. You're spending some time on your knees. You're spending some time in fasting and praying. You're saying, guess what? Nothing else matters. We've been talking about it. If you're going to come after me, you got to deny yourself. That means you got you, you to gotta separate yourself. If you're going to come after me, watch this. The minute I come after him, I'm separating because Jesus ain't going the same way everybody else going. I got to deny myself, my goals, my aspirations, all these things. I got to deny myself. That's sacrificial in nature. And then I have to follow him in submission. Praise God. So you're se separating. You're sacrificing. We're asking ourselves, how much sacrificing did I did to do today on behalf of the Lord? How much sacrifice, how much did I give up today and replaced it with God? How much did I take off, turn this off? How many minutes did I turn this off and turn God on? How many minutes did I close this book, shut this business plan down, shut this down and open up God? How many minutes? I'm, I'm up here preaching. Ouch. How much time did I actually sacrifice? Because if it didn't cost me nothing, it wasn't a sacrifice. Mm. Then he says, follow me. That's submission. That is submission. Follow me in whole obedience. Come the same way I come. Say the same things I say. Respond the same way I respond. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So Paul said, if you if you add anything to that, or if you take anything away, it's not the whole gospel. What if it's not nobody else's fault but mine or yours that you haven't seen God's promises fulfilled in your life? Because the gospel is the good news, and it came to us through grace. But as a response to us grace-wise, we need to show gratitude. And gratitude is in following him in submission to him. Amen. I mean, no, it's, gospel is good news. It ain't good advice. It, it, it's not good advice. A lot of people can give a lot of good advice. Amen. So, so you get your car repossessed. And so I say, I'm telling girl, go to check for cash. And they'll give you, they'll give you some money to pay back. Amen. But that ain't good news. Good news is somebody came and paid your past due balance and, and don't stop there. They paid your remaining balance too. That's good news. Because that's what Jesus did. He paid for, he, he already paid off your past due from every thing you did up until the time you got saved. And he already paid your remaining balance too till you see him again. That, that's, that's, what, that's what Christ, that's what the gospel did for you already. He paid everything up until that point because we keep looking at from the time, if I can just remember the day that I was converted. Paul remembered the day that he was converted. Yeah, true enough. But we got to go back even further than that. He told Jeremiah, I knew you before you was in your mother's womb. And I called you. Listen, y'all, you are great. And you are embodied with greatness. Everybody under the sound of my voice, not only here, but on the T, on, on the Facebook and on whatever book, you are empowered with the Holy Spirit of God. So you have a portion of God on the inside of you. You have a direct link, to the ruler and creator 
of the universe. We should be more and more sensitive and we should be more and more and more um, desiring to get more of God because more of God is available through the gospel. Good tidings was brought to us by grace. We didn't do anything to deserve it. But now let's start seeking him with thanksgiving. God, I'm thanking you for my healing and start walking towards my healing. I thank you for deliverance and start walking toward. Thank you for forgiveness. Praise God. That's what God is asking for. Paul, Paul, Paul said, it was, I want you to know some brothers and sisters that the gospel that I preached in Galatians chapter one was not of human or, origin, nor did I receive it from a human source, but I was taught it, but it came by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard about my former way of life in Judaism and in I intensely persecuted the church and tried to destroy it. Paul said, this was my past life. Talking about the gospel tonight, y'all. And, and, and advanced in Judaism beyond many contemporaries. He said he was the number one in his class. Amen. Among many people, because I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But watch this. But when God, whom formed my mother's womb, from my mother's womb, womb set me apart and called me by his what grace was pleased to reveal his son to me that's what jesus did y'all he called you from your mother's womb but then he he said i, I i'm gonna download some pertinent information to you you are different from the people that in circle of influence that you're around you're different from everybody else in your family. You are blessed among all people. You've already been adopted by God. You've already been forgiven by God. Amen. He said to reveal his son to me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for revealing your son to us. Thank you, God, for revealing your son to me so that I could preach him among the Gentiles. He said, I did not immediately consult with anyone. Man, it's personal. It's personal. I didn't consent with anyone, and I did not go up to Jerusalem to those who had become apostles. He said, I'm not going to just go run around the other preachers because God called me to do this. I'm not just going to run around somebody else because they're doing it. He said, instead, I went to Arabia and back to Damascus. Damascus. Then after three years, somebody say three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to get to get to know Cephas. And I stayed with him 15 days. So we ended, we ended three years and 15 days. He's spending time, man, with the Lord, finding out what this death, burial, and resurrection thing is all about. Amen, y'all. Let's start digging deep. It's time to deep. It's time to dig. It's time, it's time to get deeper. But I didn't see any of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. I declare in the sight of God, I am not lying. In what I write to you, he said, "Man, I, 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 man, that's some powerful, that's some powerful language right there. I lie not, Amen." So, the good news is not good advice. Praise God, and, and it's not a coping mechanism. Somebody say coping mechanism. It's not. A lot of Christians are coping. Come on, y'all. Thank you, sir. Praise God. It's coping. We're supposed to be overcoming. Amen. Amen. And, and we're getting exhausted. We're getting exhausted. Our ability to just to cope, we're getting exhausted. Amen. We're getting pulled down. And when we're trying to cope with a problem, that problem grows worse and worse every day. We got the gospel, y'all. I'm going to keep that down. I want you to know we're talking about the gospel. But we're supposed to be overcomers. Praise God. The Bible don't use that word. What would be the equivalent word to cope? Equivalent word to cope is overcome. That means I'm healed already, even when some of my test scores say that I ain't. I'm still overcoming because the world said it's supposed to kill me. So we're still overcoming. The world call it coping. We as Christians call it overcoming. See, I'm an overcomer. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to overcome. Let's look at John chapter 16. I looked up scripture today on overcoming. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, 
that in me ye might have peace. In this world, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If I overcome the world, I overcome everything that's in the world. Every trick, every hindrance, everything, every spirit, I've overcome, somebody say, everything. Amen. Amen. Write these verses down, Romans chapter 12, verse 21. He said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. What, what does what's that look like? Praise God, don't you know what? Yeah, I forgive you. Bro, I ain't the one with the problem. It's look like you hurt me and look like I'm in worse shape than you, but you really in worse shape than me. I forgive you. Overcome evil with good. Is that easy? No, it ain't easy. For you, it's not easy, but for him, it is. And if it's, if, if it's a problem with it, it's still us. Amen. Praise God. Don't overcome evil with evil. Don't look. Look, look at this. You spend way too much time on get back. Amen. Spend too much time on trying to Revenge, when the Bible says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. Let's move on. He just overcome the scriptures. I don't know today. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. I'm about the apostles. They loved not their own life unto death. They profession what they believe in their heart. Amen. Their doctrine and their duty lined up. It took them to their death. All of them were killed and martyred, except the apostle John, who was born in a boat, but he was poured into a hot bowl of uh, something, oil, hot bowl and oil. But then they poured him out and he shook it off. Amen. They said, we got to get rid of this joke. He just lasted a hot bowl of Crisco, a hot, hot pot of Crisco. And, and he, we poured him out, and he, he still just shook it up, still talking about the Lord. We're going to send him to Patmos. It's powerful, though, y'all. They sent him to Patmos, and when he was at Patmos, the Bible says when, when he was on that island of Patmos, God showed me some things. That's when he wrote the whole book of Revelation, the whole gospel of John, John 1, 2, and 3. He over there, man, just writing in the island of Patmos, just went through everything you went through, then God speak to you. Man, get ready for God to speak to you, y'all. That stuff you just went through, man, get ready for God. It didn't kill you. Get ready for God to speak to you. Amen. Give you some revelatory knowledge, man, to not your situation per se, but to the situations of all those others that are going through the same thing. I know why. Now, I understand, man. My pain is not my master. My pain in my body is not my master, but it's my servant. I mean, I, it has turned me, I'm using my pain to serve. And I'm not allowing pain to be my master. When you understand your purpose, pain becomes a servant, not a master. When you realize your purpose, Job, Joseph, what you meant for bad, God turned it around. For the good. Y'all meant bad for me, Joseph said about his brothers. But what you meant bad for me, you threw me in a pitch. You sold me to the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites sold me to the Immediate And I got put in jail. And I got falsely accused for rape. Amen. I got forgotten. I gave these dudes a prophetic word. And I told them what they dreamed mean. I interpreted the dream. They said they're going to come and get me out. They got out and they forgot me. So I got put into a hole. Come on, someone must be belly aching over a few things that's going on. I lost my job. This man got sold out by his brothers because he had a coat because he was favored of his daddy. Took him, stripped him of his stuff, took the coat back, put blood on it. Talking about he got ate up by a bear. Lying, man. God took him underground. Crazy, man, because it's funny. God will take you underground and bring you up in a place and people still stuck back here. 
And by the time they get there, your purpose was to bless them. So now he, they up there sitting on the throne. You go up there to get some food because it's deserted time in, in, in the land. And you mess around and run dead into the person you talked about, the person that you threw in a doggone hole, the person that you left for dead, that you sold to the Midianites, Midianites to the Ismaelites. Come on now. But all through the whole situation, the Bible says the hand of God was with him. And the hand of God was with him because he never fell back on his face. He never, ever deserted God in any kind of way. He always was still upright. Woman, Potiphar's wife, had to be fine. Probably was Potiphar's wife, right? She had to be beautiful. She enticed him and embraced him. She said, no, I can't do this to God. I can't do this to God. Amen. Amen. Your pain can be turned around as a servant, man. And serve with your pain. Don't let it be your master. Don't let it be your master. Amen. Always, man, you're strong, brother. You lost your daughter. You lost your brother. Lost your... Listen, ain't nothing strong about me, bro. If you was at my house one day, you could count up the tears. If you could count up the wrecking pain, boy, you would say, man, you really think something going on. But let me tell you something. I ain't the only one. I'm sitting up here looking at a whole bunch of folk that's crying late at night, that's going through a whole bunch of stuff. Don't you turn your back on God. Don't you give up. Don't you retract none because God... If you're faithful like Joseph, if you're faithful like Joseph, you're going to find out that your purpose, your purpose, your purpose is bigger than your pain. Yeah, your purpose got some pain in it. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 5, for whatever is born of God, overcome the world. You're born of God. Make these affirmations over your life. I'm born of God. So I'm overcoming the world. And guess what? When I say I'm overcoming the world, that looks like a large abstract uh, uh, thought. But if you can think about it, everything that's in the world, because I'm born of God, I'll overcome everything, every trial, every temptation, every lie talked about me, everything talked about you or said you overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. First John chapter four and four, my brother's favorite verse. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he is that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. His body is a mere container. Amen. They have pottery over in Israel and it's stamped dokimus on the bottom. Dokimus is pottery, amen, that has been through the kill to the highest fire. It's been through the hottest fire a kill can possibly take it through. And then it comes out, you know, the ceramic and they coat it and stuff, but it's fine pottery. But the best pottery has been stamped. It's been through the toughest fire and it still came out. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm thankful, man, that through the fire, God is strengthening me. He's strengthening me. It's still the gospel, though. It's still the gospel. You know, Satan, he likes to use the word why. There's no way you can discover why. The only one know why is God. You have to know all the, the, the surrounding circumstances you have to know everything to see why. Yeah, this tea young stand a few years, about, about six years ago. Amen. No one can answer why but God. Because to do that, it requires knowledge of every factor and every possibility. So you, you, you got to factor in every possibility. Amen. In everything, right? So it's nearly impossible to overcome. Man, when you when you when you when you constantly focus on on why. Amen. Why? Somebody said, "What for?" Yeah, what for? Amen. You focus. Why? Why? Why, God? Am I in this horrible situation? Stop focusing on what for. What is God trying to accomplish in my life in this situation? What is God doing to me in this? If it's not becoming more like Christ, 
then we had to go back to our starting point. I am fully confident that he that has began a good work is going to complete it. All things are working together for the good to them that love God. Somewhere I got to go back in scripture and find out where I jumped off at. Where did I get off at? Amen. Where, 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 did I, where, did I, where did I get off at? Because it wasn't supposed to go down like this. I'm telling you what God is doing. I know what he's doing already. I'm not going to even text my cousin, Pastor Robert, about we've already talked about the spirit of expectation. I told you I was riding in my car a week and a half ago. God spoke three words into my spirit. Praise God. I stopped, wrote him down. He said, preparation. Amen. He said, expectation. He said, manifestation. Amen. How in the world can I manifest myself in your life if you're not expecting me because you haven't prepared? Forget everybody. Forget everybody else. And I ain't talking about don't love them, don't ask them questions. Don't. Your spiritual eternity weighs in the balance. What God is going to say to us on that day when we go before him is what is the main thing. Amen. 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 That, that, that's it. That, 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 that's it, y'all. That's all going to matter. Only what's done for Christ is going to last. So right now, as he's preparing us, he says some things have to be pulled up. Try everything by the word. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether it be of God. Try the spirit, whether it be, we say, try the spirit by the spirit. The Bible says, try the spirit, whether it be of God. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Yeah. So when you, when you in your purpose, when you, when you are in your purpose and you understand that the gospel came by grace, it can't be another gospel. If anybody come preach it, anything other, let them be a curse. It's a message that was given to you by God is downloaded to you. He gives us exceeding precious promises that we may become partakers of his divine nature. So all the promises is not that I look like I'm way up here and everybody down there. The promises are God is that we become like him and become partakers of his divine nature. So we should be more merciful if we are partakers, partaking in his divine nature, his divine nature that is of a forgiver, his divine nature is that of a lover, his divine nature is that of a communicator, his divine nature. So do we look like him? How much do we look like him? How much do I look like him? How much do you look like him? Because it comes down to preparation, y'all. We all in preparation mode. I thank God and I'm moving on this timing as the messages were, we've been talking about, you know, denying yourself. We've been talking about the real cost of discipleship. We can talk about if you deny me before man, I divide, the, the, I would deny you before my father. But if you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my father. We've been talking about all these things, man, that are leading us up to expectation. And I believe when my, my, my cousin, um, Pastor Robert, come, I believe that he's going to give us some more things to deal with expectation. Not going to call him, ain't talking back and forth with him, but I believe he's going to come and affirm and reaffirm. I believe he's going to come and confirm some things, and I believe that some people are going to see the manifestation of God. In three days, praise God. I thank God for it. Three days, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th of October. Praise God. God is going to move mightily. He's moving in your life mightily. Every day you get up and get a chance to testify that you woke up this morning was a miracle. Some folk went to bed last night, didn't get up this morning. Some folk don't even know where they're at in time right now. Some folks laying down with tubes and respirators all tied up to them. We sitting in the house of God, hearing the word of God. We the most blessed individual in Michigan City right now. Most blessed individual in town right now. I don't care what nobody else say. Amen. Let's start taking, take this, let's start embracing, man, that the grace has been given unto us. And let's start going around with thanksgiving. He's already did some things in my life. He's already settled the score. We win. Amen. Amen. So I talked about some people that had found, um, found the meaning or find the what for. Job found the what for in his pain. 
Job found the what for in his pain. I'm gonna give you a few, few people that found the what for. Man, there's a what for, not a why, but Job found the what for in his pain. Dang, Job 23, eight. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where doeth where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job found the what for in his pain. I can't figure this out. I, with him, I even went to the places that he's supposed to be at, where he's supposed to be at work at, and I can't find him. But guess what? He knows. He knows. He knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. That, that's, that needs to be our testimony about the purpose, finding the purpose in your pain. Finding the purpose in your pain because it, it's not just for you. We're reading about Job right now in the Bible. Amen. I was reading today. I, I got to share this with you a little bit on off, off, off page. But when you read Luke chapter nine, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. When he talked about some of you won't die until you see, until you see Jesus in his glory. And then you go on in the next verse, 28 and on down in the transfiguration. And I was studying because I'm in Luke, man, really heavy, man. I'm, I'm in it because it's Luke, man, was a physician, and he wrote, and he said he took time to put things in order. He was a doctor, so he had great penmanship, probably knew he was right all the time. Oh, Theophilus, he said he, 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 he took it. Since he had a perfect an account of everything that happened, he thought need to put it in sequential order. So I like reading the book of Luke, but, 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 but when that transfiguration happened, and we may talk about it on Sunday, because it's very powerful. I don't want to feed y'all no fast food, and I don't want to give you a quick meal, no TV dinner. So I want to prepare it home, home cook it. I want to home cook them scriptures, man, so I can bring it to you like a home cooked meal. But watch this. The transfiguration was as such. He saw Elijah and he seen Moses, right? Moses, and he seen him in their glory, fast state. And he seen him talking. What's powerful about this, this give me, this. the only reason I'm sharing it because I was thinking about the people that's gone on to be in the Lord and, and my brother and my, my daughter. And, and I was thinking about, you know, God, this just gave me some hope, man, of eternity, man, because guess what? At that time, doing some studying, it had been hmm, 1,500 years since Moses had died. 1,500 years since Moses had died. It had been 800 years since Elijah died. But he seen both of them. So, man, I, I was like, Man, they're alive, man. They're alive beyond that veil, man. People, man, they going on, bro. Praise God. They, they, they absent from the body, but they with the presence of the Lord. Amen. And three of the disciples got a chance to see it, man. They got a chance to see it, man. They was with the Lord. 1,500 years he had been dead. 900 years he has been dead, but they seen him in their perfected state and their glory. Listen, y'all, hell and heaven ain't no joke. It's real. It's a real place. So right now, find out the purpose of your pain. Right now, find out the what for in your pain. Job did. Paul found it too. Paul found out. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. I don't want this no more. I don't want this pain. I don't want this grief. I don't want this sorrow. I don't want these headaches. I don't want these backaches. I don't want this. I sought the Lord three times. It never says. People are always trying to add something. The Bible just told us don't add nothing, don't take nothing away. All we know is whatever it was, it was troubling him, and he asked the Lord to remove it three times. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength. That right there is a comforting scripture. My strength. Somebody say great exchange. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. God want us delivered coming up on the revival. God want us free. He want us walking into this thing, man, knowing that, hey, come on, preacher, give it to us. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't heard this. We don't know you. You don't know you from. For it, it, was just, it was just by God's grace that, that, that you even asked to even come here. And now come here and give it to us, man. We expect it right now. But you got to get delivered, man. We got to forget about those things that's in the past. We got to press forward to the market of high calling. We got to live every day like it's our last day. 
Got to live every day like it's last day. I think about that sometimes. They talk about my diagnosis, whatever they say. I believe the report of the Lord. But, but you know, I could, I could pass today. I, I could go. I was telling my, my cousin Ramona the other day, uh, Sunday, I said, man, Saturday or, or Friday, I sat up on my couch and didn't want to go to sleep because I thought I wasn't going to wake up. What, 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 was, what was going on? Man, man, y'all going through some stuff out there, man. We going through some stuff. If you are enlisted in the army of God, Satan bombarding your mind, he attacking this, he hitting your body, taking your family, messing with this, messing with your parents, everything. If you really in the army of God and you fighting and you ain't compromising, if you ain't compromising, you public enemy number one. If you are not compromising, Satan trying to rip your head off and don't let, don't fall for the okie doke. No, I'm, he's not messing with me because I have a hedge of protection around me and I'm doing everything the Lord say. No, you ain't. And no, I ain't. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. Hallelujah. He said, most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities. I, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm find out the why of my pain that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I want God's power resting upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities. Now, you flip the whole script from saying, wait a minute, take it away from me. No, uh, God, if you give it to me, I guess I'm supposed to have it. If, if you give it to me, I guess I'm supposed to have it. And there's a reason. You are using this as personal development in my Christian journey. You are developing me from the person I used to be to the person I'm supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be Ronnie anymore. I'm supposed to be Christ-like, right? Right? He says, in reproaches and necessities and persecution and distress, for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, y'all, for Christ's sake. You're in pain. You're in pain. For, you're, you're not deviating off the plan of God for your life. You're on track and you get hit. Why are you on track? I'm following Christ. Get on the boat. Let's go to the other side. I'm following your will. I'm in obedience. How in the world I end up in the middle of a storm? I'm following you. You said, come on, follow you. I'm following you. How I end up in a storm? Because some people are getting corrected. Some people are getting perfected. Some people are getting corrected. Your storm, we'd be all in the same storm and everybody going through some. Some getting perfected, some getting corrected. Same storm. Same storm, same storm. What for? What for? Not why. David, Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I said this a couple of weeks ago. Not only are the steps of a good man ordered by the Lord, but the stops of a good man are ordered by the Lord too. And he delights in his way. Somebody said, what you're saying, don't add none or don't take nothing from it. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I said. said what I just said, the stops are, because Paul and them in Acts chapter 16, they wanted to go up and preach, and the whole, they were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to go up and preach. So not only will God order your steps, he'll order your stops too. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because there's people always trying to pick your, what you, your message apart. They're always, because it's Satan. He always, some people just want to, and praise God for those that just want to, but sometimes, man, Satan will put a bug in your ear because that one revelatory knowledge right there is going to give you the breakthrough you've been waiting on. Watch this. He says, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. Watch this. I have been young. Come on, somebody. And now I am old. Yet I have not seen Watch this, the righteous forsaken, know his seed begging bread. You seen it, man. In the midst of your trials and tribulations, your hurts and your pain. Let your pain be your servant and don't allow it to be your master in the midst of it. Talked about Joseph early, Genesis 50, 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. God know who prepared to go through the underground route, the route through the 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 the, the, the doo doo, the route through people messing on you, the the route through people talking, the route through 
he know who qualified to go through, but go through. Amen. He's guiding you. He say, but as for you, talking to his brothers, y'all, you thought evil against me. The same evil thought. Now watch this. That's easy to say amen to. God said, let's walk it out tomorrow, though. Let's walk it out at work when you get approached by that person. Amen. Let's walk it out and start smiling. You know, ain't nothing like when you're playing an opponent and you're playing the best you can play and they look at you and smile. They look at you and smile. That's how we need to look at the enemy. Anybody against Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and his brothers and sisters, and his daddy, Amen. They, anybody, and I'm talking about family, I'm talking about friends. If people are not solely sold out on the idea that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life, and no man come to the Father but by them, amen, then these ain't people that you want to go into nothing with. Period. Folks don't want to say it. That's, that's that man. Look at him. Now he judging all that dude. He did messed up. He did. Listen, man, the gospel don't change. What you do, what you think, because I'm, I'm, I'm under this impression now. It ain't about what we're doing as much as it is about what we think. What you think about me? What I think about you? Do I see you after the flesh or do I see you like God see you? I told you God's going to fill this place up. He's going to fill it because his presence is going to fill the room. And I ain't worried about the seats being filled. I'm going to fill up the ones that continue to come back all the time. Amen. And pray for me when you're at home. That God will hold me up and be like holding Moses' arms up and say, hey, I'm holding you up, Pastor. I'm holding you up, brother. I want, I want you to take me. I want you to take all of us to the next level in God. Amen. Praise God. So Joseph said this, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God made it for good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. He said, man, God used me. Y'all tried to kill me, but I saved y'all life. But guess what? It was bigger than y'all. See, that's what people don't understand. It's bigger than the people that you want to. So it would be good to sit up on that stage and see your brothers and them or people that did something bad to you and see them down there begging, talking about they need some food. Wouldn't that be good? He didn't just do it for them. Everybody was starving at the time. It was a drought. But I want y'all to see what God is doing for everybody. Understand that when you go through what you're going through, say, listen, God going to show. You remember, God told Joshua, I'm getting ready to magnify you in the midst of your peers. The very people that's around you thinking that whatever, God said, I'm going to do something. Amen. Amen. Gospel. God's grace. Our gratitude. God's grace, our gratitude, what God done, what he put on your account, amen, it was credit to you. And say, the Bible says Abraham believed and it was a credit to him for righteousness, amen? It got to be applied, y'all. Grace, 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 grace can't be just appreciated. It got to be applied. I appreciate what God did. You appreciate, but but you gotta apply it to your life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 17, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I said this and I'm gonna end here. Do you remember? And at what point did all things become new in your life? What 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 point in your life did did, did the new things of God begin to take hold of you? Amen. You, 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 think, you think that it was only when God's new things got a hold of you and you begin to re, 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 reorchestrate your life. But it wasn't, y'all. It wasn't. It, it wasn't at that time, you know, at the moment of your conversion. A lot of people say, you know, I played around for a long time, but then I got serious with God. But no, I told you a long time ago, and I continue to say it at the time that you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Think about that, y'all, because in the Christian, in the Christian walk, 
you know, we, we have a lot of people that so heavenly bound, they know earthly good. Some people so worldly bound, they know heavenly good. You got this, this, this huge contrast. But when you think about when I was young, 13 years old, accepting Christ as my life and everything I did from there on, you know what I mean? We have to go back, y'all, even further than that. It's not just when I was 13. God, if he didn't go back and erase everything, then his sacrificial death wasn't enough. Christ died once, the just for the unjust, that he may bring us to God, being brought to death in the flesh, but quick by the spirit. He died one time for your past, your present, and your future. But if you're taking them from the middle and all the way up, now you're perceiving it wrong. When you don't understand, you were born blessed. It'll change your whole way of thinking because we didn't experience so much defeat in our lives. Sometimes people have experienced defeat after defeat. Then they're like, wow, even on this side, I'm experiencing defeat. No, you've been an overcomer all the time. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Wow. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, at, it was, it was, it was pre-conversion. It was at conception. It was when you was conceived. Amen. You were called in eternity past. A lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth, before you even got here. Amen. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Hmm. What did God do? He took what the devil intended for evil. And he now uses those situations to bring good in our life. Anybody experiencing a, a good place in your Christian walk? But is it the toughest part of your Christian walk? Then you're on track then. Amen. It's not going to come without a fight. In the spirit, we really want God. It's going to come with a fight. You, people are going to continue to disconnect from you. Trees, branches going to start falling off because they weren't fully connected no way. Amen. Amen. Stuff going to fall off. And thank God. To God be the glory. Amen. And don't, don't, don't look at it like, just look at it as God just, just perfecting your life, man. You're just doing something in your life, man. You Now we're giving thanks for the good. We're giving thanks for the bad. We're giving thanks for the ugly. Because God is already doing it. If David can do it, if Joseph can do it, how many got treated like Joseph? How many went through what Joe went through? I mean, I mean, how many was, was, was repositioned like David after all he did? They say David broke all Ten Commandments with that one, one, one act. God restored him because he repented and was found back in God's favor. Amen. Amen. The Bible said when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Get ready to fight, y'all. Get ready to fight, church, because if we're in a pre preparation mode and those who, who have heard the voice of God through the messages of how to prepare yourself to be a disciple and have put everything else behind you are on that road, man, towards God and seeking him with everything, then be prepared. Be prepared. Not only be prepared in your knowledge, be prepared to fight. Be prepared to fight. The expectation your expectation level should be off the chart right now. Amen. Because if you've done what we've been sharing and letting that one thing go, if you've done that, because if God sent forth his word, he said it's going to accomplish what he was sent forth to do. Now, if you received it, pray God, what kind of soil? We went back to talk about what kind of soil? Crowded. Amen. We went back to talk about the cultivated. We talked about the crowded. But if the soil was that soil that was cultivated, then that then took root in you. And the word is falling not on deaf ears, but it's going to bring forth and accomplish exactly what God accomplished it to do. So bye-bye to, to, to losses, bye-bye to, to negative naysayers and, 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 and with the world called haters, bye-bye. You, you're going on into the newer things in the Lord. And God going to show it before the people. He's going to show it before the people because he said, I searched 
all over. And I looked for somebody that was standing in the gap, but I didn't find none. But he says, they he went on to say that those that know the Lord will be strong and do great exploits. That's right. Are you ready to do great exploits? Well, get ready. Because it's your season. Why? Because the gospel. Grace brought it to you. Now gratitude says thank you and let me walk this thing out. I'm going to prepare myself to fight, putting on the full arm of God that I can stand the wiles of the devil. I got the breastplate of righteousness, not my righteousness. Him who knew no sin became sin that we may be declared the righteousness of God in him. I got the helmet of salvation. I know I'm saved because of the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves. Amen. I got the shield of faith that quenched the fiery darts. Come on, y'all. I got the sword, which is the word of God. I got my feet shot in the preparation of the gospel of peace. I'm walking in peace. I'm not walking in confusion. God is not the author of confusion, but the God of peace in all the churches. Amen. So you're walking in peace. Anything that come against your peace, he said, um, God says that, 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 that your peace, your peace, you can't allow your peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes you're healed. So Satan cannot chastise your peace. It's wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was bruised for your iniquity. I was, I was abused for your iniquities. He said the chastisement of my, say it again. I was wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was upon me and by my you healed. So we got everything. We got everything with the armor. And now he says, stand. Stand. Ain't nothing in here we've been talking about physical. Everything in here we've been talking about is, 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 is spiritual. Where does strength at in the tree? Where does strength at in the tree? In his roots. In the trunk. In the roots. Amen. How deep are your roots? The deeper you go, the higher you grow. The deeper you go, the higher you grow. God it gives grace to the humble, but resists the proud. All the stuff that we ever thought about and ever thought that was going to get us where we wanted to be, God then came through and said, Whoosh! and those that have free let it go because they want God's grace, you're going to see something in your life. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we come in Jesus' name. We thank you. Yahweh, the great I am. We thank you, King of King and Lord of Lord, Yeshua, Hamash. We thank you. Healer. El Shaddai, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for your message on tonight, Lord God. We thank you that we have been re encouraged. <laughs> We, we've been encouraged over again, Lord God, that your grace is sufficient. We've been encouraged, Lord God, that even if David said that he was young, but now he's old, he never seen the righteous forsaken or seed bearing bread. We thank you, Father God, that all things are working together according to the counsel of your own will, and you are making decisions on the behalf of your church family, which we belong. God, thank you for the young ladies that came back again. Thank you, Father God, for, for, for everyone that has came and all visitors, Father God, even on tonight. I just pray, God, that you would continue to allow me to stand and give me strength. I, I pray that we will continue to keep a seek, put a seek in our seeker, Lord God, that we will seek early in the morning time, Lord God. Let us not try to, to put ourselves above anybody, but Lord, not beneath anybody either. In the name of Jesus Christ, you said we shouldn't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, but God, you don't want us to think any lower of ourselves than we ought to as well. So God, we just pray that we think the way you want us to think and have the mind of Christ. God, I thank you for all the series of, of all the, the, the messages that you are pouring in and allow me to pour out. You say freely to give, freely I'm supposed to give. So we bless your name, God. We thank you for the revival. I thank you, Father God, Lord God, for the saints that, that, that will pray for the revival on the 11th, 12th, and the 13th of October, God, that we'll come in and we'll see the manifestation of your power and your glory. It's in the master's name of Jesus. As we leave, give us traveling grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for our young people all over the city, Lord God, that you raise up young warriors, God, that can preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to change that next generation, the hearts of the people. Let somebody cry loud and spare not at 15 years old and walk it out. 
Raise them up, God, right in this city. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and thank you. Amen.